everyone, Karina Irby here with Broken Ground and today I'm here with Kaisil Orsini and she's a certified arborist and owner of Hillside Nursery here in Bozeman, Montana. And I brought uh, Kaisil on uh, to do a video with me because I want her to share uh, three tips for fruit tree pruning with you. And maybe Kaisil, if you could just start out by explaining a little bit about what you do here, what this nursery is all about, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we're at Hillside Nursery and my husband and I purchased it from the Lawson's. It was formerly Lawson's Greenhouse. And we are now specializing in shrubs and trees and perennials um, that are xeric, food producing and natives. Plus we have decoratives. That's our main focus at this point. Awesome. Very excited about that. So definitely check out the nursery if you can. Um, Kaisil, why don't you start out, you know, oftentimes I'm accustomed to pruning in the late winter, yes. but here we are in summer. We're going to talk a little bit about summer pruning. Why yes. would you do one or the other? Would you do them both? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So here um, in Montana, we do dormant pruning in March mm -hmm. um, and the main Part of that would be to reduce any kind of growth that you don't want. So you do structural work and you do um, removing limbs as well as dead, damaged and diseased, but limbs that you don't want to grow green leaves and grow fruit. Great. Yeah. Summer pruning, like if you look at this tree, which is a cherry, um, summer pruning is for in March, you don't know how many sprouts are going to come out of this limb. This is all the new growth. And so in March, we don't know that that's coming out. Right. right now, here we are in July, and it's very clear there are three sprouts on the end of this limb. And so we can decide with this cherry if we want to keep all of these or if we want to remove some of them. And we can't know that in March. Right. We can only know that in the summer. And so that's the main purpose of summer pruning would be to reduce the growth. Awesome, awesome. So let's start out by the tips that you're going to go over, though, both apply to late winter and summer pruning. Yes. Great. So yes. let's start out with tip number one. Okay. What's so your first tip for tip fruit tree pruning. Number one is clean your tools. So I like to use 91% um, alcohol. You can get it anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and so between each cut, if you have a diseased tree, you're going to want to clean your tool with it. These are pruners. I will start out. You just want to get the blade or anywhere it's going to touch the tree. That is so you do not spread disease. Um, that's very important. We do the same thing with our loppers over here before we touch the tree. Great, great. And so that's like just good thing to do. Good practice for any good hygiene. That you do. Exactly. Yes. exactly. With any tool. Yes. Chainsaw, saws, loppers, pruners, anything. Great. And I love that you have it in a spray bottle, so it makes it super easy. Super to, easy. Yeah. All right. First tip, clean your tools. Yes. Second tip. Second tip um, is going to the pruning. So we're going to start either in the winter or in summer with removing dead, damaged, or diseased. So here on my little cherry, there was a dead portion and the limb has died back all the way to here. We can see that because there's no new growth. So I'm going to remove that like that. There's my dead. Just in case this was a disease, I'm now going to clean my tool. Great. Um, then I'm going to look for disease. There is no disease on this tree that I can see, so that's good. Awesome. And if there were, I would just make sure to clean in between. Okay. Um, so then we're going to look for any damage and if we want to remove that. Here you can see this tree has been browsed by deer. We're going to consider that a type of damage. These leaves will grow back if we leave them. But in this case, I'm going to decide to take off this inward pointing branch here, removing the, the damaged and also just cleaning it up. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to leave a little bit at the base so that that can produce fruit. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So that's tip number two, yes. dead, damaged or diseased. Yep. Tip number three. Tip number three would be to create space and air in your tree. So trees do best, um, if, if, if one saying is, if you can throw a cat through it. <laughs> I prefer to say, <laughs> that would be like my grandfather saying, I prefer to say to throw, you can throw a ball through it. 
Gotcha. So you want yeah. airflow because that reduces chance for disease and spreading disease, and it also increases the health of the tree. Nice. For instance, in this tree, it's very, you can see it's very crowded in the middle. Yep. So I'm going to take off this middle branch. I'm going to go all the way down through here to its base, and I'm going to remove it. It's quite a big branch on this little tree, but that's okay. Now there's more. I can throw my hand through here. I can put my hand through here. There's a lot more air through that. I'm also going to cut off anything that's going into the middle of the tree. Mm. So in this case here, you can see this little branch here is going right in. So I'm going to clip that off. And that is also going to provide more room and more airflow. Same with right here. This branch, even though it is the biggest one, it was not browsed. I'm going to remove it because it's going into the tree. Great. So can you tell me a little bit more about, like, we're, do it, we're here in summer pruning. When should you stop pruning? Um, by the end of July. By the end of July. So in our zone, I would prune only in June, July. In between after the fruit has set, so uh, this has cherries on it. You can right. see a little cherry yep. here. Um, so you want that fruit to have developed, the flowers to have been pollinated, the fruit to have set. After that is done and the fruit is about the size of your nail, then you can prune. Okay. Um, and then you want to stop by the end of July because in August, the tree is going to start putting energy into its roots and you don't want it to have to heal any pruning wounds. Great. Now, the exception to that is mm -hmm. if there's disease in the tree you want to cut it out um, and if there's damage that's going that's unsightly or that's going to further hurt the tree then you want to take that out gotcha so and that can happen at any point at any point okay yeah all the way through the winter awesome yeah awesome great and then the other point of of summer pruning is that we have this length on the tree this is all new growth here um, so in summer we can decide to remove some of the length if we don't prefer it. So I want the length on these outward facing um, limbs here, but I don't necessarily want length going in. So here is a branch where I could just remove it entirely to air that up. And actually in this case, I am gonna remove it entirely. Or with the example of this one right here, I'm just gonna reduce it. So I'm gonna do a reduction cut there and allow it to spread out. Great. And summer time is a great time to reduce your branches in height and length. And you want to do that just to decrease the, the potential of damage to the tree? Well, yes, and the potential of growth. So this is on a cherry, this is like, what is that? Foot and a half? That's yeah. a 18 inch, that's a lot of growth. That's fine, but if it was going out more, which it will by the end of the month, mm -hmm. I may want to do what's called tip pruning and just tip that off. I'm not going to do it yet. Mm -hmm. um, tip that off so that you reduce the growth and it will also encourage sprouts. So if I want more variation in sprouts in a branch, um, then I would do that tip pruning. Great, great. So are there any differences in pruning that we should be aware of between the different types of trees, like cherry versus plum versus apple versus pear? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, great question. Um, so cherries generally, they don't like a lot of pruning. I try to not do that much to them or do the least amount. That's okay. one thing. So this is a long branch that we saw earlier. And in a pear, I might tip it. But on this, I know they don't like to be touched a lot, so I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. Most cherries um, grown here are sour cherries, and they're of a smaller caliper anyway. Gotcha. So Or, or semi-dwarf, mm -hmm. generally. Mm -hmm. So they don't need a lot. Okay, great. Okay, so here we are with a plum tree. Tell me a little bit about what we want to do differently with a plum. Okay, so plums here also do not need a lot of work, okay. generally speaking. Um, it's a strong wood and they're robust trees. However, on this plum, it's a little uneven. You can see how this side is short and this one is really lanking out this way, so it's going to pull the tree this way. So I'm going to reduce this length here, which I would only see in the summer. Um, I wouldn't have seen this in March because this is the new growth right, here. Right. So it, it's now summer. I don't want these to keep going this long. So I'm going to pick here and I'm going to reduce this to an outward facing bud. There's the bud. 
and I'm going to assume it's going to sprout here. It's probably going to sprout there and I'm going to have to take that off and sprout here too. Okay. Then here I'm going to reduce to an outward facing bud. Down here, it's probably going to sprout there, there, and there, and I'll have to take that off. Same here, I'm going to do a pretty radical one here and it's going to sprout and I'll have to remove more. But this makes, it backs the tree up a little more and it makes it more even. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, so here we are in front of a pear. What do we do differently here? Yes, so a pear is an extremely hardy tree. They do tend to grow rather narrow. So the main thing I want to do with a pear is I want to make sure it spreads out. Um, then I also want to clean out the inward place or the inside area because I know the branching is going to be narrow. So for instance, this branch is pretty narrow to this main stem here. I can put in a spreader and spread that out if I want to get it um, more lateral, mm -hmm. but I can also simply prune this off. Since I worked on another tree, I'm going to clean my clippers first. Great. Good reminder. 91% alcohol. I'm going to go in here and I know this is going to get bigger here and I'm going to take this inside one off. Okay. So that creates more space there. Would you also spread it more or you just... I might. Okay. The other thing, so you can either spread it or you can trim it. So this is this long, lanky shoot, probably three foot over, I don't know, one, two, three years here. Yeah. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna reduce it. I'm gonna take it to an outward facing bud and reduce it there. Okay. Um, and you could put in a spreader okay. here if you wanted to. These are really long. This one I feel is okay. This one is a little too long. I'm gonna reduce that. I'm gonna reduce this. I like to go around in a circle and look for where they're too long. Here's one back here. I'm going to reduce that. I already did this one here. I'm going to reduce it. What I know by reducing is that I, it's going to re-sprout because as soon as you make a cut, it stimulates um, it, the tree to regrow. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to want to watch all the places where I trimmed. And so that would you reprune or why would I you might reprune. So if this sprouts here and goes one, two, three, which it'll tend to do out of the next three active buds, mm -hmm. it'll sprout. I might take off here. Okay. Um, either this season, if it happens this season before the end of July, right. or if it doesn't, then I'll keep a watch on it next year okay. and maybe trim some of that back. Right. This tree has a lot of space in it already. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to do a lot of cleanup in the interior here, um, but I did want to reduce it back on the exterior limbs. Great, great. All right, so now we're in front of an apple. Yes. Tell us about what we need to pay attention to here. Okay, so apples are also extremely hardy, like pears. Um, they can take a lot of pruning. You never want to prune more than 30% of green wood in a season, which right. would be a lot. On a young tree like that, this, it would be a lot of wood. So we're not gonna do that. Um, but on an apple, you can do a lot of things. So I'm gonna start with our rule of dead damage disease. This limb here you can see is dead. Mm -hmm. And I would have already cleaned my loppers. I'm gonna put the shearing part of the lopper nearest to the re remainder of the tree. And I'm going to take off this dead, thank you, dead branch there. I'm gonna leave about half inch here of a stub so that um, when it dies back, it doesn't hurt this branch. You can leave an inch. It's better to have a stub than to go too far and have it die back and kill this branch. Gotcha. So yeah. people are often against stubs because mm -hmm. they're unsightly, but they're actually healthier for the tree than um, going too close. Gotcha, yeah. Okay. And then this is dead too, so I'm gonna take that off. Um, this little one here is probably damaged, so I'm going to take that off. That's dead. I'm just going to go through and get all my dead and damaged off on this side. Here's another one pointing inward also, so we, we want to take it off for two reasons. It's pointing inward and it's dead. This one's pointing inward. I'm going to take that off. Same here. Now if we come down here, this got pruned. Mm -hmm. probably by a deer uh -huh. and so this has shot out a new sprout and it's going into the tree I don't want it to go into the tree right I want it to come this way so I have to make a decision am I going to remove it entirely 
which I'm not going to do because this little branch has already suffered. Mm. I'm going to take it back pretty extreme to an outward facing bud. And this is going to sprout and I'm going to try to get it to come back out this way. Great. Great. Um, so I'm cleaning up the insides. Um, this little guy here could come entirely off. He's on the inside there. I'm going to take that off. And I'm removing any dead, damaged, and diseased. And I'm looking at the structure of this tree to see if I want to change the structure at all mm -hmm. by pruning. Mm -hmm. So the only place I want to do that on this tree here is these two limbs repeat. They're going the same direction and they're coming out almost at the same place. Right. I'm going to choose between these two and I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to use my loppers here. And I'm going to take this one off so that it's not repeating. So that's a structural cut. Now I've got two branches coming out either side, a branch here and a branch back here. Awesome. Yeah. Any other thoughts of, uh, with regards to fruit tree pruning that you want to share? Um, the biggest thing I would say is like to watch your tree for disease. Mm -hmm. We have various diseases in the region. Yep. Um, and especially with that wet spring that we had. Yes. Um, it was warm and it was wet, which is a poor combination for a lot of diseases. So you want to watch them and then you want to cut back if you have fire blight in your apples or pears or if you have cytosporic canker in your stone fruit, you want to cut that out back 12 to 14 inches. Okay. And if you have a question about if you have disease, you can come here or you can go to the extension Great. office at the fairgrounds. And so with regards to any kind of pruning, is this done for the life of the tree? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Always. So always making sure that you're taking care of your trees and observing right. your trees right. for the entire life of the tree. That's correct. Don't forget about them. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. Like thank I you. said, if you are looking for edible fruit trees and berry bushes and you're in the Bozeman Gallatin Valley area, definitely come to Hillside Nursery in addition to native drought tolerant plants. So thank you so much uh, thank you. for doing this video. Thank with me. you.